Good news everybody, Nintendo GameCube prices haven't moved a lot since my last video. The bad news is, is that they're probably going to stay this way for a while. Welcome to Retronomics, the series that follows price trends in video games, and today we're talking about the Nintendo GameCube. If you're new to the GameCube collecting scene, check out my buyer's guide on the system, which gives a good idea of what to expect when you first start out. Now let's get into some prices. I have 31 games to forecast, and the prices are accurate as of the publishing date of this video, which is in the description. I'll also forecast the GameCube system as well, but I'll give a general forecast as there are so many variations that I'd be here all day. I get all of my prices from PriceCharting.com and also look at sold listings and available listings on eBay to forecast whether the game prices will go up, down, or stay the same. If you're new here and like this kind of content, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe for future content. Before we get into the games, here are some general stats. When you compare prices from the last video in October to now, the average price change was a whopping 67 cents. And only one game increased in value over $100 and that is the Pokemon box which increased almost $600 from October. What's more interesting is that some of the heavy hitters, games like GoGo, Hypergrind, and Disney Sports Basketball have dropped in price quite a bit since October, suggesting that the prices are still correcting as more copies enter the market. In fact, in my last video we had 71 games over $100 and now there's only 66. Still a lot more than 13 that were over $100 in 2020, but it is a good sign for people interested in the GameCube that some of the prices are retracting. I do want to address the fact that there are a lot of copies of games selling without the manual. I've mentioned in previous Retronomics episodes, but price charting can't indicate this as it goes off the title of the eBay listing, which rarely indicates that the manual is missing. These haven't really impacted price charting's price too much as their algorithm doesn't weigh one or two outliers, so discrepancies aren't that big of a deal, but I do report them when I see them. So with that out of the way, let's get into some individual prices. The Nintendo GameCube system is a little more tricky to forecast because do I forecast a loose or complete system? Most people buy the system loose if they're looking to just play the games and price charting seems to have more loose systems sold per week than a complete system. Also it's almost twice the price, so complete system is listed on the right here, but when you track the complete price the swing in value seems to be in tune with the rest of the games on this list compared to the loose system which has not really climbed in value as much as you would have expected. In fact, before the pandemic the price of a loose and complete system weren't that much far apart, so if you were considering buying a console now, you can't go wrong with a loose one and it probably would be a great time to get a complete one this year. Cubivore has dropped about $100 from the last video in October, but it's still fluctuating. Some copies range from $450 to $630, which is a pretty wide wide range, but again, condition matters in these cases and people are willing to shell out a bit more to ensure a minty copy. More copies are available for around the price charting price, so if you have been holding off, now's the time to consider looking. Rally Championship kind of exposes the issue that price charting has when it comes to charting prices. While it does show that the price of the game has dropped almost to what it was three years ago, some of the copies in the sold listings are missing the manual, which has been pretty common lately. Rare games pop up and they just seem to be previous rentals. But even the complete copies available aren't that much more than what price charting has it listed, so just make sure you have everything before pulling the trigger. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle has risen a bit since the last video with previous copies selling for well over the price charting price, and yep, the reason is that those have the manuals. So it's a good time to mention that I really don't take what price charting's price is literally as what you should pay, but as an indicator of where the prices are trending, so just to address that comment before it happens. I suggest picking this up now because it doesn't look like we'll see any more significant price swings from here on out. 
Ikaruga has dropped a bit since the last video and sold listings are for around the price charting price and they include the manual, so that's really good. Probably due to the fact that Nicholas has pledged to reprint the physical Switch version, including that Hyper Gun version in the next couple of months. The one with the model is already available on for the PlayStation 4, so I expect the price to level out for the next couple of months. If you were holding off on a decent price point, I would probably buy now. I think that we're seeing GameCube prices even out with minor fluctuations up or down. And Mario Kart Double Dash is a prime example of that. The game has been between $65 and $75 for the past year and a half with some brief dips below $60 prior to that. I think it's a safe bet to say that Nintendo has no intentions of porting GameCube games in mass anytime soon. Mario Kart Double Dash will probably be the more desirable of the series since it has the most unique gameplay. It wouldn't be a bad idea to buy now, and even if Nintendo somehow announces every single GameCube game on the Switch in June, the price of a physical copy will remain at or around its current price. But hey, I would love to be wrong, Double Dash is a really fun game. Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness has tripled in value in the past three years, and now it's starting to even out. Unfortunately, that means that a $60 game a couple of years ago is now a $200 game. The Pokemon series has seen increases across the board and while this isn't a mainline RPG, it is still a game that people enjoy playing. This game will likely remain around its current price for the foreseeable future, I just don't expect any price surges in the next couple of months. Disney's Sports Basketball is just a game for completionists. The North American version is pretty hard to come by and when copies do come up for a sale at a reasonable, and I'm using reasonable very loosely here, they're missing the manual which as a collector's item is the most desirable part. Three copies back in January sold for about $400 but a copy with the manual sold for $1200 just 8 days later. There hasn't been a sold listing in almost a month, so it looks like the one sitting for $750 might be waiting a while. Beach Spikers is still a reasonably affordable game when you consider the heavy hitters on this video, but it is a volleyball game which isn't as desirable among collectors. Sports games in general don't fetch a high dollar unless they have some deep RPG elements to them. It's just the nature of the scene. Good news for people looking for a decent sports game though. If you find a decent price, pull the trigger. Geist is another game that has tripled in value over the past three years. It's a Nintendo M-rated game exclusive to the GameCube, which is a rarity nowadays. Unlike other games on this list, the price is still climbing, rising about $20 from the last year. So this might be one to pick up now rather than later because it's possible that the price it's going for today will be the lowest of the year. Second Sight has, surprise, tripled in price over the past three years, but at least it's still under $30. This game is available on other platforms, so the price of the GameCube version will likely remain stable relative to the rest of the games on this list. Honestly, it would probably make a lot of sense to buy now as more expensive games on this list stabilize, the cheaper games will increase. Ultimate Muscle is really interesting because it doesn't really have a consistent price. Sometimes it will sell for less than $100, then the next sale will be close to $200. And that's complete with the manual too. I don't see this game running away in value anytime soon, so keep an eye out and maybe you'll catch a deal. Paper Mario A Thousand Year Door has been bouncing between $100 and $110 for about a year and a half, so I think it's safe to say that if you were holding out for a price drop, it's not going to happen anytime soon. I know a lot of people were hoping for a re-release on the Switch, but man, it hasn't happened yet and it probably won't happen in the next year or so. We just recently got Metroid Prime Remastered after almost 7 years of predicting it, so it honestly feels like Thousand Year Door will remain locked to the game. GameCube, so I suggest nabbing a copy now or wait just a bit to see if you can get one for under $100. F-Zero GX has had more wild fluctuations, but it's probably because sold listings are inconsistent. And yes, I only counted the ones with a manual. I think people really forget how difficult this game is compared to the rest in the series, and that's why the price hasn't completely run away and crossed that elusive $100 mark on PriceStarting.com. 
I don't think that it'll reach $100 consistently in the next couple of months, but don't expect the prices to drop anytime soon. If you see a great price, nab it. Super Mario Sunshine is a great example of what happens when a popular game gets a physical release on a modern platform and remains relatively untouched. The price has been below its pre-pandemic price since October of 2020 with no signs of it creeping back up. I know people like to clown on this game, but even the worst 3D Mario game is still a good game. And at the current price point, it's not too shabby if you want a quality GameCube game to add to your collection. Eternal Darkness is probably never going to be less than $100 from here on out. It's a game that doesn't fit the current Nintendo model, so it's unlikely that it will see a release on the Nintendo Switch. As the popularity of horror genre continues to grow, Eternal Darkness will rise along with it. It's Resident Evil adjacent, and it's a quality game to boot. If you have watched any of my Retronomics videos and still slept on eternal darkness i don't know what to tell you this game isn't going to drop anytime soon but if you find a deal make sure you buy it metal gear solid twin snakes is on its way to stabilizing in value for the next six months the swings in price are getting smaller and smaller despite the rumors of a remake for the playstation 5 set to be announced in the next few months it is hard to find any concrete evidence outside a handful of seo baited articles and all of them are sourcing some spanish site so take it with a grain of salt in the last video, I didn't think that we'd see a big swing of a price, and so far I've been correct, so consider purchasing this game sooner rather than later because even if a remake happens, it probably won't be like you remembered it, and it won't be physical either. Skies of Arcadia Legends keeps flirting with $200 on PriceTraining.com, but never quite stays there. A handful of good condition copies have sold for around that amount, so it's not unlikely that you can still find it for a little less than what Price Charting has it listed for. Sega has been willing to republish their older RPGs, so maybe Skies is next. But even if you are looking to play it on the GameCube, you won't see a price drop anytime soon. Super Smash Bros. Melee was largely unaffected by the 2020 price boom, holding steady throughout. And even at its current price, it doesn't seem that bad. It is one of the best selling games on the platform, so it's not like copies are hard to find, but demand does keep the price at a premium, so buy now or wait. Chibi Robo has dropped a little bit since my last video, but that doesn't really mean much in the grand scheme of things. It's an expensive game that has a cult following and probably will remain high for the near future. As I've said in previous videos, it would make a lot of sense to buy it now because if you're waiting for a price drop, you're going to be pining for the days when it was closer to 200 rather than 300. Luigi's Mansion hasn't increased a lot over the past three years, but it is still a pricey game compared to what it was before 2019. Luigi's Mansion, when it was released, was overlooked as a glorified tech demo, but has aged like fine wine over the years, being a beloved title. And I'm a convert as well, buying this game only just a couple of years ago, despite owning a GameCube since launch. I suggest picking it up if you want a relatively inexpensive first party title. Hopefully we'll see a new Luigi's Mansion on the Nintendo Switch sooner rather than later. I guess it's safe to say that Twilight Princess won't be coming to the Switch anytime soon. The rumors of a Zelda game collection have fizzled out after several missed predictions. Of course, there's always a chance that it'll come out, but it's not a sure bet like it was a couple of years ago. This version of Twilight Princess is desirable as it doesn't have waggle controls and still looks gorgeous despite its 420p resolution. The HD remaster for the Wii U has some creature comforts and less than the GameCube version if you want to go that route for now. Is it a hot take to say that Def Jam Fight for New York will never drop below $100, or am I just preaching to the choir at this point? Yes, Def Jam is expensive. It's a unique game made by EA when they took risks, and it's got iconic rappers from the early 2000s, and it's a good fighting game. So it's rare form indeed, and I understand why people are willing to shell out a lot of money for it. Honestly, buy it at a price you're comfortable with because it'll be end of days if this ever manages to get out of copyright entanglement and get re-released in its original form. 
Alien Hominid is a game that I didn't think would ever get this expensive. It's half the price on the PlayStation 2, and as far as I can tell, there aren't any significant differences. It's a neat game made by the same people who made Castle Crashers, and the Alien Hominid Invasion game is still coming soon, but I think the price has more to do with the fact that it's a quirky game on the GameCube rather than a rabid fanbase looking to get their hands on a physical copy of an obscure game. I personally would wait to see if the price drops a bit, but if the rest of these games are any indication, it might not be a significant drop, so keep an eye on it. Gauntlet Dark Legacy does have different versions on the Xbox, GameCube, and PlayStation 2, and a lot of people feel that the GameCube version offers the best experience. This is a fun game that you can play with three other people, so if you are looking for the ultimate GameCube experience, Gauntlet is a lot of fun. Is it $100 of fun? Well, you be the judge. I don't think that we'll see a re-release anytime soon, but if anyone could make a spiritual successor, they'd make a lot of money. Buy now or wait, it doesn't seem like the price is going to swing wildly in the next few months. The price of GoGo -Go Hyper Grind has started to correct from its peak of $575 back in September of 2022. I don't think it'll drop any further because it still is an Atlas game and it's a rare game and it's unique. While Atlas is republishing some of their back catalog of expensive games, time will tell if the more expensive games will get the same treatment. You would hope that the prices of these games are catching the eyes of more studios looking for a better revenue stream. If you can afford it, keep an eye on auctions and snag it when you see it pop up. Metal Arms Glitch in the System is a multi-platform game and the GameCube version is the most expensive. Luckily, it's not as expensive as the rest of the games on this list, but it is creeping higher and higher as time goes on. Like I mentioned with Beach Spikers, this is par for the course with any system. As the rarer games rise in value, casual collectors get priced out, and then there's a deep dive into the library for cheaper yet good games for the system, which rises the price as a result. Given the sales of the game are about two a week, I do think that it's worth it just to keep an eye out for a sale and pull the trigger, but the days of this being a sub $20 game are long over. Fire Emblem Path of Radiance is a game that has been sought after for a while. The Fire Emblem games prior to the Wii U era were games serving a small yet dedicated North American audience. Now you can't go two feet without hearing of an announcement of a new game. Shame that they haven't decided to re-release the GameCube version. A game now goes for $300 and it's part of a popular franchise is rare form. I don't expect this game to drop in value anytime soon, so save up and get a copy when you see a price within your budget. WarioWare Mega Party has a bit to go before it really can be considered as a settled price, but even at its current price starting price, it's still a lot of fun to play bunch of mini games with friends and you can link it up with the Game Boy Advance as well. The reason for the price drop isn't known exactly, but I would wager the spike was due to the last push of people looking for a complete GameCube set. So snag it now or wait, it doesn't look like we'll see any wild swings in price. Super Mario Strikers has also settled down in price. I guess the Switch version is good enough to satiate the soccer craze, but it is probably like WarioWare where this was part of the GameCube set and a popular game to boot. I don't think that it will drop in price significantly anytime soon as it is a complete blast with four people. Even at its current price, it's well worth it in my opinion, so don't sleep on this game. KO the Kangaroo Round 2 had a brief brush with $40, but now it's settling down. While this series has had new entries, the popularity of the game doesn't appear to be enough to keep pushing the price up, which is good news for anyone looking to add this game to their collection. Just don't wait too long as I don't think that we're going to see significant price drops. I decided to add one more game to the list and that's Metroid Prime. I'm surprised they didn't talk about this earlier, but it's an iconic game. The first of the series to move to 3D, which was incredibly controversial, but now the game is heralded as one of the greatest on the GameCube. And now it's remastered and physical on the Nintendo Switch. I would say wait and see if the price goes down any, but with the Switch physical version being tricky to secure, it might not cause a significant drop like Mario Sunshine did. But it is possible considering that the game retains the spirit of the original on the Switch. 
So after looking at those prices, you can see that in a four month time frame, not a lot has happened to GameCube prices. Sure, the prices can still rise or drop, but this is the second GameCube video that suggests that prices aren't going haywire like they were back in 2020. Speaking anecdotally, the comments on my videos from the past year or so haven't been getting the same comments suggesting that my prices are all out of whack. It used to be that when I would make a video, it would be obsolete in two months, and now videos that I made a year ago still hold up. In fact, in my last video, I suggested that when I would make this video, we wouldn't see too many significant swings. So if you were on the fence on whether or not to subscribe to the channel, maybe that's a pretty good reason why. But again, GameCube games are still pricey. When prices go up, especially significantly like they did in the past few years, they rarely ever come down to below what they were before the spike, at least not right away. I still think that we need to see price trends for the rest of 2023 to see any indicators that prices will correct all the way back to pre-pandemic levels, or at least only be 10 to 20% higher than what they were originally instead of what they are now which is 100 to 200 percent. Are you more likely to start collecting GameCube games now that prices have settled or did you stop collecting the system altogether because it's just too expensive? Comment below and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and share it with those who might find it interesting and if you're new here and you like what you see consider subscribing for future content. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Snicktendo. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.